Uh, let's just quickly do a quick summary, quick overview of this new working paper, the latent role of open models in the AI economy and what it means for CIOs, CTOs, CISOs, or in general, any business. And in today's world, almost, you know, I remember early days, we used to say, it doesn't matter what kind of industry you are in, you have to have software, sorry, then we talk about okay, cloud, and then of course, Docker, Kubernetes, and now AI. So talk about the, the idea behind this paper. Sure, yeah. So I think the, the, the title says a lot um, because, you know, we, we all know that, that there are open models and there are closed models in the AI economy, but it's been hard to really measure exactly, you know, how these are being used and, and exactly to what extent the kind of the, the share between open and closed models are. Um, and so we were able to get some data on this, which I'll talk about in a moment, but we find this kind of latent or hidden value of, of open models. Um, that, uh, that is there and is measurable and important to the economy. But actually, as, as you have pointed out, is, uh, you know, is, is underutilized on many dimensions. So, so many companies, many individuals could be using more open models that are just as good or even better than closed models. And the closed models often are much more expensive. And so, um, so that's what we tried to do in this paper is really think about how, uh, you know, A, just understand what's happening in terms of the AI economy and, and the models that people are using, but B, really measure and understand, you know, the, this kind of uh, long running history with open source and the, the various reasons that people choose to use proprietary and closed source uh, software. How is that playing out in the open model world? Let's just talk about the Alipa development. In this paper, you estimate that there are tons of billions in unrealized economic value from open model. Can you walk us through what's really behind that gap and how you arrived at that estimate? Sure, yeah. So, so we use data from a, a platform called Open Router, uh, which many of your listeners may have heard of before, but it's essentially a, a gateway to, to LLM inference, right? So these large language models that, that are the backbone of a lot of the Gen AI work um, are, are, there's many of them that are out there. And the Open Router acts as a, a platform where you as a developer or a user can easily say, you know, today I want to use GPT-5 in the application I'm building, but tomorrow I want to use, you know, Llama 3 or something like that and you can easily swap between these so that's useful for developers because it makes it easier for them to you know go back and forth and test different models within their own applications but as a, as a byproduct they they make some of their data public on who's using what model and we can actually and and how much and so we can actually see that and so what we end up looking at is something that we, we estimate is about 1% of the overall LLM API economy that's out there, which, you know, in itself is a smaller piece of the, the, the whole AI economy. But we can really see at a very granular level who's using what model and, and how are they being used and how much and, and also importantly, what are the prices of these models? Um, because unlike, you know, traditional open source software, um, open models in the AI context, you can download them and you can run them yourself on, on your own servers. Uh, but instead, um, what we see in the, the open model context is that people will often kind of still run them on servers. And so you're still paying a bit for the compute power, even if you're getting the, the models themselves for, for free because they're open. So that's sort of the, the data set and the, the data that we're looking at. And what we see in this is that people are using uh, are the closed models much more, right? So about 80% of the usage that's that's seen on Open Router um, are closed models, um, despite these models having much higher prices, about six times uh, the price of open models on average. Uh, and often there's only modest performance advantages, right? So we do a whole bunch with using the various benchmarks that are out there for understanding the, the goodness or the performance of these types of LLMs. And we use a couple of different ones and, and are able to show that, you know, yes, often the closed models have uh, leading performance, uh, but frequently the open models catch up very quickly. And that rate of catch up is actually getting faster to the point where the open models are catching up to the, the closed models um, almost within uh, three or four weeks, right? So within, within a month. And so, you know, when we think about all this in aggregate, uh, the obvious question then sort of becomes, well, if, if the, mo the open models are, are almost as good and are much, much cheaper, why are so many people uh, preferring to use the closed models, right? And so 
we we t- kind of take that as a as, as a challenge, and, and um, that's something we're going to dig into further. Um, but we see these variety of reasons why um, why people may be doing this, and we're we're going to continue the work to to try and tease them apart. So um, just to give you a sense of like what those those reasons are, you know, we can think about um, you know the the benchmarks may not be measuring actual usage, right? So when we're comparing these models on benchmarks, it's not really capturing what people care about when they're using them. We can also think about something that's long been, you know, been there in economics, which is switching costs. So, you know, say you start using the GPT series and you're, you know, paying open AI, whatever it is that they're charging, and then newer, better models come around, but it's hard for you to swap away from that, right? And so, we, you know, we see this in technology all the time, right? That, that these switching costs are, you know, lead people to being kind of uh, baked in and, and continuing to use uh, the same technology they always have, even if they're upgrading the technology. They're sticking with the same vendor or platform or model series in this case. Um, and we also see some things like like information frictions or or security concerns. So people, you know, have may have uh, concerns about a lot of these leading models are, are coming out of China um, and all the the kind of geopolitical baggage that may come with come with that. Um, but all, even beyond that, we can think about people having the same concerns they had about open source software, where you know if I'm using an open model that's that's freely provided, if something goes wrong. Who am I going to sue, or or who am I going to call for customer support, or these types of things, right? Whereas if you're using a closed model, you're not only paying just for what the model is doing, but you're paying for sort of the ecosystem that surrounds it um, in terms of liability concerns and and tech support and things like that. Um, so we're we're uh, actually probably going to gear up and run uh, uh, some surveys to try and actually dig into that. Um, but at the very least, at the moment, uh, what we're able to show is that if people that are using closed models um, swapped to open models that were better uh, than what they're using on these performance benchmarks, you know, we we don't have to push everybody into open models. The ones that are using the leading cutting edge closed models and want that extra little bit of performance, they can stay on those. But if the rest of the folks swapped to, um, you know, better performing open models uh, that are cheaper, then they'd be saving themselves about $24.8 billion, right? So that cost difference is is quite large. Uh, and this is, you know, that that's the estimate we end up with ac- across the economy. Uh, which is substantial when we consider the estimates of the investments that are happening in AI, uh, you know, this year, right? And so, uh, and so that's that was our goal with this paper it was not necessarily to, you know, take some very strong statement on open is better than closed, but just to think about how the end users who who may you know be very aware of the closed models because they're better advertised or more prevalent in in kind of the mind share, um, may be you know un, unintentionally costing themselves more money when they could be getting similar or better performance uh, for a cheaper amount.